Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please re remain standing for a moment of silence. Please take your seats. Uh, roll call, please. Here. Uh, there was an executive, executive session held prior to tonight's meeting to discuss litigation in real property. Are there any public comments on agenda items at this time? Any public comment on agenda items? All right, uh, I'll make the motion to approve the minutes and reports. Minutes from March 13th and 20th from the Fire Department, Police Department, Treasurer, Code Office, Health Department, and Planning Commission. Do I have a second? Second. Yes. Reichner? Yes. Arnmark? Yes. Heister? Yes. Uh, unfinished business, there is none. Uh, there is new business, uh, BACO funding breakdown. Uh, Steve? Okay, so we finally got our, our BACO in. We've been working on this for two years to get a new BACO in down there. Uh, as you can see from the breakdown on it, it was a $255,000 machine, got an $89,000 post charge discount, $10,000 John Deere loyalty discount. So that makes it do $155,000. Uh, and then the grant that we applied for uh, paid for $116,000. So the total cost of liquid fuel is going to be $38,000. However, uh, to get the grant, you have to pay for you report the portion of it on the front end. So we need to pay that 155 on the front end. Um, my available balance in my liquid fuels major equipment item is 121,000, which leaves 33,788 dollars and 62 cents that we need to procure from city funds on a short-term basis for four to six weeks until the grant comes in. Then the money's reallocated back into the city that 33,788 dollars and 62 cents and 82,775.89 will be returned into the equipment fund for liquid. Questions, anyone? I think I was to make a motion that the treasurer, working with uh, Rick and uh, Mr. Alex, figure out where we're going to pull it out of these different accounts, pull it out, make the payment, put it back in once we receive the uh, put it back from the state, right? Not what you grant, yeah, recycle grant. I'll second. Right there? Yes. Armart? Yes. Heister? Yes. Yes. Uh, comprehensive plan contracts. I'm just going to table that to a the next meeting. The contracts are being finalized. There's some uh, wording that had to be changed. So I'm going to make a motion to table that to the next meeting. Do I have a second? A second. Armart? Yes. Heister? Yes. Rochas? Yes. Yes. Uh, county grant application, Mr. Backer? So uh, the county has a grant application, I know we talked about earlier, or a couple weeks ago, I guess I should say, um, it's for a award amount of max $50,000, only municipalities can apply, we have to match it dollar for dollar, um, and it is due the 14th, so today, April 14th, so today is the last uh, council meeting we can vote to go for whatever project we would like to. Um, I did talk to Councilwoman Martina, and she would like to go for uh, funding for the full 50000 for her um, her public works building to upgrade that and she was going to match it with uh, two years of capital improvements within her budget so 25 for next year and 25 for the following year so that was that was what she wanted to do but you know for questions or answers also a nice okay that's just saving you money left and right there uh, first of all, Steve and I have walked through the building numerous times. We had uh, Lee Zivers, our engineer, look at it. Structurally, the building's good. Around the door jams, it was built in 78. 78 to 72 flood money. It needs work. Door jams, 30 years of the salt and so forth drywall. So I think it's excellent. Uh, Steve, you have some numbers. We'll spend 100, but that's doing the door jams over. Throwing the entrance doors over, doing new doors on the building, insulated because one's on out the old style fiberglass. I don't think they can take them anymore. No, they don't. 
and uh, it would save a lot in heat and uh, so forth. And then there should be some money left over to get some block to start because the bottom of the building is detached. Oh, yes, thank you. We were going to take and literally come up around four foot, four fours, four foot, four yeah. fours, whatever. No, no, it's about six fours, it's six, four foot. Yeah, four foot. And they block all the way around so it doesn't happen in the future, so it should be there for a long time. Question, this one entrance door, are you guys going with keys or going more modern with key fobs so that way there's not keys out everywhere known to man? Like kind of like how the police station had to have a fob to get in, not an actual key because, you know, over the last 50 years, how many of those keys have been copied and... Listen, I'd love to have entry door where you have a swipe to get I in. think that's, that I mean, phenomenal. I know it's probably more expensive. I just think it's going to be, I mean, your, your entry doors are, are already prohibitively expensive. Yeah. To go to, 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 to keyless or the keyless type or whatever they call them, where you just wave a card in front of yeah. them and you into that. I would love to have it. I just don't know. I mean, we have, I mean, I think there's just so many things that are in, in their safety issues yeah. and are in so bad shape down here that I don't know if it's necessary. I'd like to do that. I mean, I think it's an option that's look, worth looking into. I mean, sure. then you know a price because, you know, yeah, how many, of course, work. over the last 50 years have keys been made and copied and maybe never well, no, returned? Well, I changed every lock in the building when I started. How many of those keys got copied? Hey, I'm just lock. kidding. Every, every key has a number on it and everything's set up on a spreadsheet and you tell you where every single key is in the city. Yeah, but you know, it's just something to look into if it's, you know, if it's an option we can do. Yeah. Uh, and here again, on that same note, I know Brad, you were talking about cameras, there'd be a time to take it, cover that place with cameras. Yeah. You don't have a lot of problems down here, but you never know. You never know. Right. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, but we have our, our Fencing issues that we're going to eventually need to address. How we want to incorporate our side with the, the sculling slide. There's, there's, we could absorb a million dollars down there and still have stuff to do. Honestly, I mean, there's just a lot that needs done. All right. I will second Councilman Nicer's motion. Actually, he did a few minutes ago. Nicer. Yes. 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 Um. There was uh, the discussion item from the CDBG has been moved up to uh, the new business for voting. Uh, Councilman Neister. Yes, basically, and Jamie's here, but they can, uh, can help me out here. Uh, by taking the block grant money and committing to five years as, a, as one project allows Derek, when he's out there looking for uh, other grants, it helps him. Now, this doesn't mean if we're going to do it, but this gives them the option to use that five years as a match to other grants. But that doesn't lock us into any particular project. If we want to move funds around, we can still do that as vote of council, correct? Yes, and there is no guarantee DCD is going to approve this. So this is what's called getting a waiver for free award costs. So basically, you would be getting DCD's approval to spend up to five years of your funding before you have it. And then you would basically be reimbursing yourselves for, say, a pen bet loan payment or something. Yeah. Um, HUD has approved this in Bloomsburg for parking lot projects, which is the precedent that I am using with DCD saying HUD approved this. It's allowable. Therefore, DCD should allow it. Yeah. So, what we need, um, and what I've asked from Derek, is that DCD wants the award or the request letter to come from the city on letterhead signed by you. So that's what I need right now to get to them to see if they'll even say okay to doing this. And no, it does not lock you in. You could still decide to change your mind later and do something else. If you I'm understanding this correctly gives us more money to more borrowing power. <coughs> you would have the ability to pay back the loan. Right. Your, Bloomsburg, for instance, is paying back the USDA loan that you did for their parking loans. Questions, anyone? Yes, uh, I had a business person contact me who's been here for years and years. And he had asked, and I talked to the chief about it, putting two meters, two heads, which would be four meters total, four stalls, in the parking lot. Brad said we're going to do it. We should put them in all the places so eventually that old timer will be phased out and then you won't need them anymore. But about next year? 
Yes, we'll put it. He talked to me. One business was complaining, so, but we can't discriminate against other businesses, so we'll have to put we'll in put all two meters in all lots and had meters, not every lot. Yeah. The ones that had, we'll put two meters in every and lot. And like I said, still the same rate as same all. Same rate. Okay. It, they'll they, still be there. They it's, it's would being rather used. pay the meter that light. What's that? They would rather pay a meter that light. I have no idea. That meter. No, what it is, I have no idea that's how to do it. No, well, that's, that's what I meant. Like, yeah. they, it's, you yeah, okay. Just you know, some people, you know, they hate to try something no, new. Uh, All right, so, are you just making us aware of this? I don't know if yeah. you just spoke. Cause it's to do it. Thank you for making us aware. Well, you're quite welcome. Are you purchasing additional heads? No, we have, we have, we have actually we bought in case the other ones go bad. So we have enough. Thank you. All right, Councilman Leister, we're from cameras. We can we all have the proposal in the packets? We're looking at. Right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. If you look down across there, you'll see the locations market front and uh, front and at the amphitheater, Church Street Pump Station. These are cameras of. A lot of these are already locations where we had cameras before. And what he wants to do is, of course, add front market, the intersection, and run it down to Fourth and Market, and all along Front Street, giving cameras watching Front Street and the river because we have issues with uh, vandals with damage down in the river on our dock systems and so forth. But he feels where the locations are at the gazebo. Chestnut Street, we can watch the locations and make sure where we're going this and also watch the intersection. So if you look down across here, it shows the uh, dollar values for cameras, installation, and so forth. <coughs> look down across, study it. It is um, uh, where, where the funds be coming for this. Um, or, or you're just making. Well, this here under cameras, we have money. Kevin isn't here today. He knew what he was doing, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so they're in a grant <coughs> or something of such where there was funds well, that covers money set aside from the check we receive every year. I was supposed to when we were discussing it yeah. this evening or earlier. I understand. And uh, there's money in there. When that was set up, that money's supposed to be going towards computers. Yeah, so there was money there from the past that yes. okay. for this. For this particular, yes. Okay. I have a question. Maybe this might sound petty, but it says batteries may be needed. Who's going to be keeping the maintenance on them to make sure if the batteries, when they need replaced, that they will be replaced? Whose job is that? Well, most likely fall under my department because, or the police department says, hey, we have a bad camera down here. Is it the camera? Was the battery? Or what we do on Steam's all his computers he has down there, we'll put a rotation system in every. Two years, it was a battery replaced. Three years, we can take it, rotate them out. The battery is part of The battery back. It's for UPS. The battery back. It's for the battery back. And they have to be replaced every so many years. Yeah, yeah. So for the S, I mean, so I mean, so this is, I mean, for the five thousand nine seventy five, like that is the cost for all this. There won't be any other hidden fees behind or anything like that. No, I spoke to him today. No, I just, I just want to, you know, double check. No. He went over everything here. Well, yes. Did I hear you say something about going out to Fourth Street? Yes. Okay. Now so that's, is that putting one on each light? This would be the hub here. He's a term he calls it, uh, whatever. But uh, Forest Street camera, the cameras on the gazebo watching Cameron Park and also Market Street. And at the front market, if you watch north and south and east in towards the uh, flagpole, there's Wises cameras. But what the, 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 the the, the, the one on Fourth Street is going to be at the, the light, at the, at the traffic section. light, and okay, then uh, three hundred dollars per camera, right? Yes. Why wouldn't we go put one on Fifth Street and also well, one on the left? Phase two. I think this is like the beginning phase. Beginning. Get this together, Rick. Okay. Make sure get it up and operational. Then all right, hey, it's working. Boom. Is there an estimated, I don't say completion, but all right, when we're going to get started, this matter, all right, we're going to move forward and get everything ordered and so on. I'm sure if we put on this this evening, it's a positive, so we order this stuff automatically. Uh, get the ball rolling, ball rolling. Okay. And Frank, he does want to do what you mentioned, 
But I said, let's get something going that we can say, the chief can say, listen, look at the cameras. Baby steps, and this is what we're going to end up. So the only question I have is, if it looks like for $600 more plus labor, you're going to go all the way up to the left. I think eventually you're going to have cameras everywhere. Up in 4th Street, on North Fork, all the way down around. That, that particular day is to this. It's a whole other thing there. <coughs> so the question I have is, who's going to have access to this and who's going to be monitoring this park? I said, I don't have to watch it. We don't have to watch it. But it's not, it's not a, if I can help answer that. It's not a matter of just standing there and watching them. It's a matter of being able to say, okay, hey, when something happened at the gazebo, can we go back and look from this time period to that time period to go? It's like our cameras we had not the PD. Nobody stands there and just like stands there and stares at them. It's just a matter of having access. Now access to the to, to all over the city, I mean that could be any city official. It doesn't have to be just us. It's a web-based system that you'll be able to like get on your phone, be able to pop it up and say, hey, I want to look at what's going on over to the gazebo. You could do that like before. Some of the stuff can be actually added to the uh, city's website so people can go on and look at the riverfront at times. So it's all time stamped then? And everything. Yeah, everything's time stamped. So, I mean, it's not like it's, nobody's going to be sitting there monitoring the whole time. It's just a matter of we can go back and look. There's no, there's no difference than anybody else in business having a camera system. Usually, one person doesn't just sit there and watch all day. So when something happens, they can go back and kind of look at it. But, and Keith said to me that there's all the options that. I say up at the ball fields where three o'clock in the morning shouldn't be anybody there. And we'll trip and notify an officer, he can bring that camera up in the car. Am I correct? He can do it in the car? And say, look and say, okay, here the kids are breaking into the snack bar or something like that. That's a Oh, would that be making out the uh, riverfront as well? Oh yes, the that's options are all over the place. So the, the only thing I would recommend is to make sure the solicitor reviews this whole thing. Because he is a city employee already, um, his other business. I just don't want to get any jams, any, any, any issues. So I just want to make sure the solicitor approves this because I don't, you know. We had talked before about this, and then we didn't get back to it. Uh, but I would just have him make sure it's kosher for us to do this. Make the motion, Councilman Eister. I make that motion. We take and proceed with the camera system. Second. With, with the approval of the solicitor, just to be safe. Thank you for that notation. Second. Thank you. Yes. 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 Keep on going. Okay. The trailer. I'm going to get, uh, I talked to Jamie today and uh, I don't have to get any quotes, but I want to get quotes to bring them in because the last one I got was about at least three months ago, so I'm not sure if it's good anymore. So I'm going to start from scratch, get two or three. Jamie said, am I correct? Anything under the 10,000? I think right now it's actually 12 or something. Because of the way it's modified every year, it's 12, 250, or something like that. But so let's say 12. So you're just saying you're getting quotes coming back, right? So we can purchase the quotes. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it's micro purchase. So anything under 12, 250, you can just purchase without getting quotes. So, but if Councilman Eisner wants to get quotes, that's even better. So then we know we get the best price. That way we can be covered by the solicitor again. Keep going, Councilman Eister. Okay, the Ford truck. We got our new truck the other week. Back from Brad And, uh, which one we on here? Okay, it's a 2012 and up 250. I can take it on Mr. Walker, put it in this little bit, and uh, put that up for sale. Quick question, where were the, when, when it is sold, where were the funds be allocated to? Well, that's something we should be discussing because of it. Put back in the general because 24. I was thinking about getting another truck to replace the old Chevy. So you're saying into the general or back into a line item for parts and rec towards a vehicle? That's what I feel because I do feel just like Brad has some cars coming up. Okay, because he just got another one. If once he sells, should we put back in the system so next year when he gets this fifth new one for the five year rotation? He had some seed money in there to keep it going. Car. Yeah, I know. So I talked with Steve earlier today about doing the same thing when they sell equipment that goes back into their whatever. This is a little different though. No, I'm talking about like equipment, like we'll say small hand, like those types of things. So well, the more, helps. the more money you give them, the more expense. Oh, my recommendation to you is this: either either it goes back into your line item budget, or it goes into capital reserve. That way, it's locked in someplace that. Well, if it doesn't go back in the line item. 
capital reserve to spend something else. We'll go back in. Well, no, we reserve. Unless you note it in there. Well, it's a line item to me then. So, it, it should. Capital reserve, parks and rec vehicle. That's how it could be. I don't care where you put this, we have it when it's on A. It's great. Great, you hear that? Yep. Yeah. All right, so make the motion, Councilman Meister. Make the motion to uh, sell that truck on this list. Second. Hornmark? Yes. Heister? Yes. Rochus? Yes. Yes. All right, Councilman Barnhart. No, Heister. Oh, Heister again. No, is it the Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Sorry, yeah. Councilman Heister, I apologize. Sorry, that's fine. We're moving along here so fast this evening. Uh, the pool, swimming pool, for raising the prices due to the chemical cost. Anybody has a pool fair with buying chlorine in the last couple of years? And I don't know exactly, but on the six dollars. Correct, sir. And uh, of course, the uh, <coughs> package is also one up. But is there any questions on the pricing here? No, and just to pick off what Councilman Ice just said, I mean, that's right aligned with all the other community pools in the area about the same price. Yeah, so it wasn't like we're above or right with everybody else at the time. So we'll make that for a motion. Second. Heister? Yes. Rochus? Yes. Reichner? Yes. Barnhart? Yes. Now, Councilman Barnhart, I apologize. I make the motion to approve resolution 2023-21 to remove 1114 and 1116 South 11th Street from the nuisance list. Second. 114 and 116. Now what I said? Oh, you said 1114, 11, 11, Did I? Oh. 11, 14, 11, 16, South 11. I second that motion. Yes. Reichner? Yes. Barnhart? Yes. Eister? Yes. yes. Keep going, Councilman Moore, through them all. I make a motion to approve resolution 2023 to remove 125 and 127 Church Street from the nuisance list. Second. Reichner? Yes. Barnhart? Yes. Eister? Yes. Reichner? Yes. I make a motion to approve resolution 2023 23 to remove 342 Ray Street from the nuisance list. Second. Barnhart? Yes. Eister? Yes. Brochus? Yes. Reichner? Yes. I make a motion to approve resolution 2023 24 to remove 461 North 2nd Street from the nuisance list. Eister? Yes. Brochus? Yes. Reichner? Yes. Barnhart? Yes. I make a motion to approve resolution 2023-25 to update the public nuisance list. Second. Rochus? Yes. Reichner? Yes. Barnhart? Yes. Heister? Yes. Councilman Reichner, there are vouchers and invoices. Yeah. Oh, nice job there, John. Get those off the uh, line property list. Okay. It's always good to have them removed, not have it on. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like Councilman Reichner. Do we have a... Uh, Seventy thousand dollars. General fund. We have bills of seventy thousand two hundred thirty-five dollars and twenty-eight cents to general fund, and one hundred twenty-three thousand six hundred eighty-eight dollars and seven cents in liquid fuels. Make a motion. We pay those bills. Second. Mark. Yes. 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 Uh, discussion items. There are a couple. Uh, Keystone Collection Group 2024 delinquent tax collector. I imagine that's where Treasurer Troop wants to go with as we do in the past. Now, what, what, what story is we're going to, we're going to, I mean, the recommendation is we're going to have Joel check this stuff out. The understanding we got from Kevin that he was notified that the school district already has switched and the county is going to switch because of raises in the fees that statewide was charging and different things like that. So. Uh, I just the discussion part of the, the, the recommendation to have our solicitor verify the stuff with the county and the school district, and then we'll go from there. Thank you, sir. Anything else, Councilman Reichner? Right anyone else on that topic? No. All right, uh, Councilman Meister, city website. Yes, there's a packet in there. Wish everybody would review until the next meeting. Also, the town of Bloomsburg, their website, they, this company just finished that uh, website. And uh, once everybody reviews it, we'll take and have another meeting for questions and answers from them. Yeah, I remember they said they'd also come in for a presentation yes. to show you all the, you know, ins and outs, how, what an old website would look like compared to a new, modern, welcoming website that has 
big differences by how you word things. So, so spend some time on the site and uh, go through the packet. Sarah is there. I think we all have the rest of the presentation. And uh, the council will go over. Any questions anyone at this point in time on the website? I will say this much. I think the city is underutilizing the website that we currently have. I think it's a, what we're seeing across the board of law enforcement is that's how you're getting your hires, approved and stuff like that through your website. So um, really, I think it's a good step moving forward for the city. So I hope it works out well. Thank you, Chief. Uh, announcements or RAQ announcements. Uh, they're accepting letters of interest for a vacant three-year term on Board of Appeals and ARB. One alternative on the Shade Tree Commission. Uh, please submit letters to the City Clerk or at jbarner at sunburypa.org. Uh, 460 Arch Street property uh, will be auctioned off by the Sunbury Redevelopment Authority on April 29th. More information can be made available and found on their website at sunburyredevelopment.org. The next City Council meeting will be held here at City Hall on April 24th at 6.15. And is there any public comment at this time? Please state your name. Melissa Rouse, Stegman City Community Library. I just want to remind everyone um, that when you guys do get to the Fifth Street cameras, the city bought the library two cameras that actually go into Central Park and the van shelves. So those can be hooked in as well and keys installed. So there's nine cameras at the library, but two of them actually just want to remind you guys. Thank you. Please state your name. Slade Shrek. Just reminding everybody that the next business forum meeting for the business group is April 17th, Monday, at the Albright Center at 6 o'clock. Any, oh, go ahead. Please state your name, sir. Joe Bartello. I just had one question about the cameras. Will this round of cameras have night vision? I don't know. Yes, uh, the installer. Uh, he's aware of the fact we look at the cameras all the time. Yeah, it's, Joe, sometimes you get, you get, what's the word I want to use? You get kind of mixed up with night vision compared to light, you know, it's, it's all about well, light. Well, low, low light cameras. Yeah, it's all, it's all about light, you don't understand that. Yeah. So I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to have like night vision. But, but I mean, like, they'll be set up, they'll be set up correctly so, so when the, whatever the light assessment comes back. That, but whatever lights in that area, it's going to absorb into that camera. I was just wondering because most of the vandalism probably happens at night. You know, yeah, it's like and that, if you want to catch those areas down by the river are lit up pretty good. Okay. So I mean, especially the gazebo. If they do something there at night, it's, it's lit up down there. Okay. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get back to them that. All right. Any other public comment? Please state your name, sir. Uh, Todd Herb, my wife and I own uh, Raptors in South Florida Street. We weren't sure where to go or, or who to ask. We figured we come here. We'd like to have. Uh, uh, Bid in our outside sand pit this summer in the spring, but we wanted to make sure it was okay and what the stipulations were, rules. What did you say when they had it, Mr. First? Bands, outside bands. bands in our sand pit. I mean, as long as you're within the noise for yeah, hours. We actually do the noise now for the LCD, so we don't. I mean, as long as it's done before 11 o'clock. That's. I mean, we figured that you you handled that because I think that's what we got a letter in the mail about. But but as long as, long as it's off by 11, we're good. Go by the noise ordinance and uh, noise and ordinance and then we'll go from there. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Cool. Any other public comment at this time? All right. I adjourn this meeting. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't say that.